the look at the signature in that. Look at the rotation that we're getting in this one. All right, so very very strong tornado. Again, as I mentioned before, debris now lofted uh, at about 20,000 feet. If you're in the town of Collins, you need to be taking cover because here it comes. You're in that tornado warning. Both of these, both of these are tornado drew emergencies, Jackie. Uh, kind of amazing watching all this. Massive wedge tornado. This is the town of So So County. So, again, two significant tornadoes. The tornado I just showed you, the massive one, miles wide. Wide tornadoes. Just saying that you've already thought of the 2.6 mile wide El Reno 2013 tornado. Weather enthusiasts might think of the Howell, Nebraska tornado at 2.5 miles wide. But how about the Basefield Sosa EF4 that occurred on Easter Sunday, April 12, 2020, and would become the third widest tornado in recorded history at 2.25 miles wide. Throughout the 12th to the 13th of April 2020, 141 tornadoes would be confirmed, including 13 EF3s and 3 EF4s, killing 31. In this video, we dive into the meteorological setup, the tornado, the outbreak as a whole, and its aftermath. Before we begin, only 7% of people who watch my videos are subscribed, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, then consider doing so. Also, I have a Discord server that I'm always active in. Link is in the description. 2020 had an active start to the year, with a tornado outbreak on the 11th to 12th of January 2020 that would spawn 81 tornadoes. March of 2020 recorded 85 tornadoes, with a series of small outbreaks manifesting. Notably on March 3rd, an EF-3 would cover a path through Nashville, Tennessee, killing 5, followed up by an EF-4 to the east that would impact Cookville, killing 19. In March and into April, an expansive area of high pressure built across the southeast United States, contributing to abnormally warm temperatures across much of the country, as well as moistening the air near the surface. Increased instability associated with an anomalously warm and moist air from the Gulf of Mexico has been associated with an increased risk of severe weather and tornado activity. On April 8, 2020, the Storm Prediction Center outlined a 15% probability of severe weather from central Texas eastward into the Florida Panhandle and eastern Georgia, valid for April 11th to 12th. These threat areas were later refined with the introduction of the Day 3 moderate risk across northeastern Louisiana through central Alabama on April 10th. Over subsequent days, a significant mid-level shortwave trough progressed eastward across the United States. A small area of low pressure moved across northwestern Mississippi. It caused surface winds to turn out of the east-southeast, enhancing potential for tornadoes. On the 12th, at the 500 millibar, winds were reaching 90 knots. Temperatures were in the mid to high 80s, with dews in the high 60s to low 70s. Cape, over 3,000 joules per kilogram, was present. A dry line in Oklahoma in the a.m. hours would rapidly move east, becoming the catalyst for storm development. All the ingredients were in place, and in the morning hours of the 12th, thunderstorms on the dry line, mostly isolated in nature, began to form and develop into supercells. The outbreak is now underway. The initial storms that formed produced scattered weak tornadoes in Texas during the early stages of the outbreak. The storm complex progressed across northern Louisiana through the late morning and early afternoon hours, and embedded circulations within the line began producing strong tornadoes. Only EF-1s and one EF-2 had touched down before the first intense and notable tornado had touched down. This tornado was an EF-3 and would trigger a tornado emergency as it moved through downtown Monroe, damaging or destroying numerous homes but there were no casualties. To the north, a second EF-3 near Stirlington caused extensive tree damage. These tornadoes would be followed by a considerable amount of EF-1s and 2s in Louisiana and Mississippi before an EF-4 would touch down. This large and violent wedge tornado touched down just southwest of the rural community of Hope, Mississippi. The tornado quickly became strong as it moved northeastward through Hope producing low-end EF-2 damage. Rapid strengthening and widening continued as the tornado inflicted more significant damage while crossing Mississippi Road 27. As it passed to the east of Sartonville, the tornado reached its peak intensity as it completely swept away a house near James Ratcliffe Road, leaving only a bare foundation behind. This house was secured to its foundation with anchor bolts, which were found bent. One tree on the property was ripped out of the ground and thrown several feet. 
a nearby brick house was leveled with only a pile of debris remaining. The tornado then weakened to EF2 as it crossed Felix Road and Holmes Road, as several power poles were snapped and a large swath of trees were flattened. Continuing in the southwestern corner of Jefferson County, the weakening tornado produced EF0 to EF1 tree and tree limb damage before dissipating at Joe Dyes Road, several miles to the southwest of Basefield, Mississippi. In total, the tornado tracked 21 miles and reached a max width of three quarters of a mile wide, killing four with its 170 mile per hour winds. But this was just the prequel to the main event. Six minutes later, another EF4 would pick up right where the previous tornado left off, touching down just south southwest of Basefield, Mississippi. The first area of damage occurred along Basefield Cemetery Road and Base Road, where trees and tree limbs were downed at EF0 to EF1 intensity. The tornado quickly intensified as it continued to the northeast and crossed Bray Horthon Road and South Williamsburg Road, reaching EF2 strength as it snapped and uprooted numerous large trees. A small area of low EF3 damage along Hosey Michael Road was noted where a mobile home was obliterated and swept away with little debris being recovered. Northeast of this point, the tornado became violent and expanded to one mile wide, as the EF4 level tree damage began to occur along Pitts Lane and Reese Road. Four people shortly after would lose their lives as Mama D's, a small restaurant housed in a cinder block building, was leveled and swept away with the concrete slab found largely swept clean of debris. The tornado then reached its peak strength as it tore through the rural community of Cantwell Mill, where a large anchor-bolted cabin was completely swept away and reduced to a bare slab, with little debris recovered. Damage at this location was rated high-end EF4, due to several issues with the structure and surrounding area. Extreme EF4 level tree damage continued to the northeast along Willie Fortenberry Road, Davis Road, and Kings Road as entire groves of large trees were completely stripped clean of all bark. Livestock was killed, and vehicles were thrown hundreds of yards and destroyed. The massive tornado continued to grow, reaching its peak width of 2.25 miles wide, west of Seminary. An entire forest was leveled, with significant debarking to some trees, while thousands to millions of other trees were damaged. After causing more high-end EF3 and low-end EF4 damage, the tornado then narrowed to 1.7 miles wide, but continued to produce EF3 damage as it crossed US-49 to the north northwest of Seminary. The tornado then moved through the small town of Sosa, damaging or destroying multiple homes, some churches, and the local fire department building. Numerous trees were snapped throughout the town, and several mobile homes were destroyed. Most of the damage in Sosa was rated EF3, though a small area of low-end EF4 damage occurred along Mississippi Road 28, where a well-built concrete block convenience store was completely leveled. The tornado then weakened to EF2 intensity and continued to the northeast of Sosa. After crossing Mississippi Road 15 and entering Jasper County, the tornado intensified back to low end EF4 intensity as it struck the community of Moss, where nearly every structure in town was damaged and numerous homes were destroyed. Several of these homes were flattened with only piles of rubble remaining, and one was left with only a single concrete closet standing. After the tornado rapidly weakened, EF1 damage was inflicted as the tornado crossed into Clark County and struck the town of Pachuda. Damage in Pachuda consisted of trees down and minor roof damage. North-northeast of Pachuda, the tornado finally dissipated at County Road 320, after causing some additional minor EF0 tree limb damage. Throughout its 2.25 mile wide and 68 mile long path, 8 people were killed and 95 were injured by its 190 mile per hour wind. Debris from the tornado was carried considerable distances, with a photo from a destroyed home in Moss being found 121 miles away in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, while another one was lofted and carried 176 miles from south of Collins, Mississippi to Randolph, Alabama. Shortly after to the north, an EF3 paralleled the before-mentioned tornado to the northeast. This strong, long teract wedge tornado was spawned by a supercell thunderstorm that tracked closely behind, and just north of the supercell that produced the previous two EF4 tornadoes. It first touched down along Price Road in Lawrence County, Mississippi, east-southeast of the small community of Topeka. 
Damage at the beginning of the path consisted of a few trees uprooted at EF0 strength. The tornado continued to the northeast, quickly reaching EF2 intensity as he crossed Given Road, where an area of large trees were flattened. The tornado strengthened further and reached EF3 intensity as it moved through a wooded area near the Pearl River, where a log cabin was destroyed and numerous trees were snapped and partially debarked. Crossing into Jefferson Davis County, EF2 damage occurred in areas to the northeast of Oakvale, where numerous trees and power poles were snapped. Outbuildings were destroyed. Homes sustained severe roof damage, and a mobile home was destroyed. A small area of EF3 damage occurred along Kirkley Lane, where some trees were denuded and partially debarked. Crossing Mississippi 35, the tornado, after weakening, reattained F3 intensity as the James Hill Church was completely leveled. A nearby home sustained the collapse of its exterior walls, and trees were denuded and partially debarked. EF3 damage continued along Three Notch Road, while a mobile home and two frame houses were destroyed nearby. The tornado weakened back to EF2 intensity as it approached US 84, snapping and uprooting numerous trees and destroying numerous chicken houses. As the tornado continued to the northeast, it produced EF1 to EF2 damage as it approached and crossed US 49 to the northwest of Collins, downing many trees. Crossing Jones Chapel Road to the northeast, the tornado weakened to EF1 strength, with damage limiting to down trees. EF1 tree and outbuilding damage continued along the remainder of the path through the rural community of Paulding, until the tornado dissipated along County Road 31 to the south of Rose Hill after 84 miles of terror. After many EF0s, 1s, and 2s, Another tornado would touch down near the Chickamauga battlefield in Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. The tornado was on the ground for 18 minutes, traveled 18 miles, and was 1,500 yards wide. This tornado would be rated EF3. Throughout the Chattanooga metropolitan area, 2,700 properties had been damaged, of which 254 were destroyed and 250 had major damage. Total damages were reported as reaching $225 million, and two people were killed, while an additional 18 were injured. Another EF3 would be spawned in South Carolina, as it touched down near Stonewall Drive to the south-southeast of Westminster. The tornado was on the ground for 15 minutes and tracked 16 miles, and it had reached a maximum width of 1,000 yards. There was one fatality and five injuries. Damages in Seneca were reported as being in excess of $100 million. Four more EF3s would follow. The most notable touched down near Livingston, South Carolina, and heavily damaged or destroyed multiple homes. One unanchored home was leveled, and several anchored double-wide manufactured homes were completely swept away and obliterated, with their frames being thrown hundreds of yards. There were two fatalities in one of the homes. Numerous trees were snapped, denuded, and partially debarked along the path. Many power poles were snapped, and a pivot irrigation system was flipped. Some outbuildings were destroyed as well. At least seven people were injured. An EF4 would begin in Hampton County, South Carolina. The large multi-vortex tornado quickly became strong as it moved northeast, crossed Old Orangeburg Road, and impacted Federal Corrector Institution in Estill, which was significantly damaged. The damage to the medium security prison was so severe that occupying inmates were relocated to Pennsylvania. The tornado then reached its maximum width of three quarters of a mile wide and mowed down a large swath of trees, destroying a cell tower. Some trees in this area were denuded and partially debarked. The tornado then turned deadly as it crossed over South Carolina Road 3 and US 601 to the northwest of the small community of Nicksville, killing two people in an obliterated mobile home. It then impacted another group of homes to the north of the town on the Turner Expressway, heavily damaging or destroying them and killing three in the area. A well-built two-story home was leveled with only a pile of debris remaining, and some of its debris was scattered into the yard. Damage to that residence was rated EF4. After weakening significantly over the following minutes, the tornado inflicted minor tree damage to the north-northeast of here before dissipating to the north-northeast of Fetchtig, near the hampton Colton County line. The tornado was on the ground for 27 minutes and reached a maximum width of three-quarters of a mile wide, 
over its 23 mile path, it would be rated EF4. This EF4 would kill five people in the hardest hit areas, just south of Estill and in Nixville. The rest of the outbreak would produce plenty of EF0s and 1s and 2s, and another EF3 before it would end, leaving behind pure carnage ranging from North Carolina all the way down to Texas. States of emergency were issued for many towns and cities in almost all affected states. 31 were killed by the 141 tornadoes that had touched down. The headliner was the Basefield Sosa EF4 with its 2.25 mile wide path, the third widest only behind the 2013 El Reno and the 2004 Hallam, Nebraska tornado. Despite this, the tornado overshadows the outbreak as a whole and people don't realize just how devastating and widespread the outbreak really was. If you enjoyed, then please consider subscribing as my videos take up to 15 hours of to make so if you could do that it would be very much appreciated also i have a before mentioned discord server that i suggest you join and uh, yep goodbye